Ladies and gentlemen, the February 12th, 2015 Longview City Council meeting is now called to order. The invocation, the player, excuse me, the prayer and pledge will be led by Pastor John Williams of Victory Road Baptist. Please stand. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, we're thankful to live in a land where we're free to assemble. We're thankful that we have people in all levels of government that represent the people. I pray for those who represent the citizens of Longview tonight. I ask that you would guide in the de deliberations that are made, and we pray that all things will be done according to your will. I ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. It is now time for citizens' comments. I'm going to run through a brief list here. The speaker gets six minutes to speak if they are speaking about something on the agenda. They get three minutes if they are speaking about something that is not on the agenda tonight. All right. Let's see. Looks like we've got four cards. Now we've got several cards on planning and zoning items, and we'll hold those till we have the discussion on the planning and zoning. First card tonight I have is Miss Sissy Ward. If you'd please come forward and introduce yourself and tell us where you live. Okay, I'm Sissy Ward. I live in Longview. You want my address and phone number? I think we have that. Um, I'm here to thank the city by way of the city council for the support that you have given us for 20 years with the Unity and Diversity Committee, which started out as the Race Relations Committee, which was part of the Drug Task Force at that point. Today, uh, we're part of the Partners in Prevention, and we simply would not be here if it weren't for the support that we have gotten from the city both financially in our early days of meeting when we had four or five or ten people up until today when we may have 50 or at our luncheon that we just had 450. So your liaison from the city uh, is invaluable help. The other people from the uh, employees of the city that come and help us decorate, um, I just I was chair of the Unity Awards luncheon, which we just had. And uh, it simply, we could do it, but it would be very hard to do it without your support. So I just wanted to thank you for that. I don't know how many attaboys you get, so I thought I could throw one down and, and tell you thank you for, for your support. Thank you, Ms. Ward. All right, the next card I have is a Francis Ramsey. We only want to have Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Francis Ramsey. I live here in Longview. I wanted to discuss uh, the animal shelter. Um, I knew that the animal shelter was in the plans for a good while. Um, I've always thought that it was a um, rather extravagant building. Um, spending almost six million dollars for an animal shelter for stray dogs and cats but then when I saw the um, article in the newspaper uh, after your last meeting where the city is uh, planning to operate the animal shelter I wanted to come forward and talk about that um, I, I really don't understand why the city is getting involved in this when the city does not get involved in uh, charities for um, people that need help I contacted several charities in town, Highway 80 Rescue Mission, Hannah House, and Newgate Mission, 
and I was told that the city does not contribute to any of those, um, not for their building costs, maintenance, or operating expenses. So I'm not sure why the city has so much concern for animals if you don't show concern for people. Um, and I'm not, I don't understand why these, um, these people that do want the animal shelter, why they have not formed uh, a nonprofit uh, and raised the money for the construction and for the operation of it. Uh, as far as the annual operating costs of the shelter, in your meeting uh, in January, um, you quoted expenses of uh, about one, $1, million, um, $1 million um would be the expenses for the first year with a shortfall of 731000 You said you had 500000 put aside uh, for operating expenses, but that would still leave 231000 that you would have to make up. So, uh, and then by the fifth year, you estimated that your expenses would be 1,550,000 um, with a shortfall of approximately 198,000 um, after estimated revenues. So these are not one-time expenses. These are expenses that are gonna go on year after year. Um, and um, you're, you voted to go ahead and do this um, without really a commitment from, from um, well, like the neighboring cities. You're hoping to get um, contracts with them to um, use this shelter. But at the time you decided to do this, you didn't have even a tentative commitment from these uh, other towns. Um, and then you're also hoping to get donations from uh, citizens, but um, I don't, I don't think most of the citizens know how much this is gonna cost. Um, so I would, I would say that the planning for the operation of the shelter was not really sufficient uh, because you didn't have tentative commitments from the other uh, neighboring cities. Uh, there's no clear plan that was discussed about how you're gonna make up the difference. Uh, this shortfall every year, uh, the proposed revenues uh, for the fifth year uh, were 700 and, um, 712,000, I believe. 200,000 of that was made up of license fees, um, microchip fees, and spay and neuter fees. Uh, that's something new to this community. If the citizens do not want that and push back on that, then how are you gonna make up the difference on that? Uh, that added with the 200,000 that you're already gonna be um, uh, deficient would mean 400,000 that you'd have to make up. Um, so, you know, a comment was made that the community wants this. Um, I'm not so sure that the majority of the community does, and, and, ex and certainly not at this amount of money, and not for this much expense every year. Um, and I would just challenge you to take your uh, proposal to any local bank and see if you could get a loan for that. I don't think they would, I don't think they would grant you a loan based on your uh, pro forma financials. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ramsey. Uh, that's, uh, your figures are very informative and yes, it is a big step. Um, I appreciate you coming up here. In fact, I would like to visit, if you would visit with some of the city staff and become more involved as this process goes on, we would certainly appreciate it. Thank you. All right. The next speaker I have, Shanna Kistner, if you please, yes. My name is Shanna Kistner. Um, I'm a resident of White Oak, but I do work here in Longview and I own a house here in Longview and my daughter goes to daycare here. Um, in light of recent events and everything, I thought that maybe a suggestion should be brought forward about uh, community policing. I mean, I think they do a great job as is, but uh, I think that maybe if we increased PAR officers to two officers per beat instead of just one and rotated their days off, that way there's a PAR officer on duty every day, that maybe it would um, repair some of the community rapport with police officers, uh, rebuild that trust that's been broken to some that don't support the police anymore. Maybe that would help in different ways and I know it definitely does not fix the problem, but it could be a start to help fix the problem. Um, this, if 
PAR officers got out there more often than they do now with just one. They had two, they could get out there more. Um, they could build trust between them and the citizens and they could have maybe the citizen report something to them that they wouldn't necessarily call in about to dispatch and maybe they would report it to them and maybe some of the crime that happens would be stopped at a lower level rather than some of the high levels that it gets to. Um, and I know this requires more funding and opening more positions and everything, but maybe that's a suggestion that something can be looked into there and go from there. Um, and then maybe if they get with some of the teens that could create interest in law enforcement and create a whole new thing there. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kissinger. Okay. Um, Vic Verma, Vic, are you out there? Yes. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Mounts. Mayor Pro Tem Allen, members of council, I'm Vic Verma. Um, I'm a resident of Kilgore, but I'm the City of Longview Unity and Diversity Committee Chair. On January 29th, the City of Longview Unity and Diversity Committee held its 11th Annual Unity Awards Luncheon. We honored three very deserving individuals, Reverend Bob Bruce, Reverend Dar Darnell Thomas, and Armatha Banks. As chair of the committee, I am proud to be associated with this great event. I am also proud that for the second time in the history of the luncheon, we had a non-Christian blessing of the meal for the event. This is nothing against Christianity. In fact, as usual, we had a closing Christian be benediction that was delivered eloquently by Reverend Tim Watson. I am proud because as part of a mission of our committee, we try to showcase diversity. This includes religious diversity. And this year, Salim Shabazz, the Imam for the Islamic Center of Longview, delivered the opening prayer. Salim is a past chair of the Unity, Diver Unity and Diversity Committee and an active citizen in our Longview community. Many members of our community embrace the opportunity to hear from a representative of a different faith. It represents our diversity and it is an opportunity for the overall Longview community to learn about groups that, may, that they may not have exposure to otherwise. Unfortunately, there are those in our community who feel that we should be limited with respect to diversity. They feel that freedom of speech and freedom of religion should, should be limited only to themselves. One example is Pastor Glenn Stone of Marberly Baptist Church. On page 7A of the Longview News Journal on February 6, 2015, Pastor Stone and Marberly took out an ad criticizing the Unity and Diversity Committee for the invocation. They said, we did not achieve our goal of unity. They chose to be divisive. Apparently for, for, for Pastor Stone, unity only occurs when people agree with him. Well, that is now how the world works. We are a community with individuals who differ in many ways, including our ideologies. That does not prevent unity, however, if we work together where we have common ground while respecting our differences. Pastor Stone has no tolerance for such respect. He expects respect for his rights, but does not respect the rights of others who may disagree with him. I have now lived in Texas for 19 years and Gregg County for 17. In my time here, I've become very accustomed to opening and or closing Christian prayers at many events, including government meetings. As a Hindu, I've respected these traditions. No one asks the non-Christians at these events if they are offended, and I wouldn't expect to be asked. Yet when a non-Christian prayer occurs at a public event, Pastor Stone and those who share his views suddenly feel like their rights are being trampled. This is a double standard. I will conclude by noting the following. There are no lessons to be learned by pa from Pastor Stone on unity and diversity. We honored Reverend Bruce and Reverend Thomas for their joint efforts to bring people together. It is the opposite of what Pastor Stone stands for, which is dividing people. His vision of division may appeal to some, but many of us support unity and diversity in our community, and we will not be deterred by the likes of Pastor Stone. Thank you. Thank you, B. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's the last speaker card I have. Are there any others in the audience who have had any item they wanted to speak on that did not fill out a card? Okay, thank you. We will now go to the consent agenda. All right. Are there any items on the consent agenda that council would like to remove for discussion or separate consideration? Okay. Second. Hey, that's quick. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Okay, consent agenda is unanimous approval.
We will now go to the, Ms. Angela, all right, we'll now go to the zoning public hearing items. Next is the planning and zoning section of the agenda. A public hearing will be held to consider application Z15-01 filed by Premier Management requesting a rezone from agricultural to general retail for approximately 1.5 acres of abstract 280, 258 PP range survey, track 2905, section four, located at 330 East Hawkins Parkway. Ms. Choi, interim city planner will present. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Allen, members of council, Mr. Willard. Um, the applicant is requesting a rezone from agricultural uh, to general retail for property located at 330 East Hawkins Parkway. Um, cur uh, previously, there was a church located at this property. Um, the potential client wants to operate a restaurant. Um, in order to do so, um, a rezone is required. Staff finds the proposed zoning change is consistent with the future land use map and surrounding zoning. Planning and Zoning Commission and staff recommend approval. I would be happy to answer any questions. All right. Thank you, Angela. All right, the public hearing is now open. Do we have any speakers in the audience who would like to speak in favor of or opposed to this item? I have a couple of cards up here. Uh, my name is Zareen Khan, and I'm representing Premier Management uh, according to this abstract uh, for general retail, and uh, we are the one who are gonna have a restaurant there, so if any questions, I'm open to them. Any questions? Mayor. Yes. Uh, I got a question, please. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Yes, sir. Go Madam, ahead. what type of restaurant is going to be at this location? Uh, we have a restaurant called Chillum Grill and More in Hallsville, and we are opening a second branch in Longview. Uh, this is an Indian, Mediterranean, and American restaurant. Okay. How many square footage do you think about? Uh, it is uh, about 4,000 square feet. About 4,000 square yes, feet. Sir. Accommodates how many people? You think about uh, 75 people? Uh, yes, sir, about 85, yes. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, any other questions? Okay, thank you, Ms. Khan. Thank, thank you. Thank you, all right. The public hearing is now closed. Do we have any questions of city staff on this item? Nope. Do we I, have a motion, I'm please? I'm to approve. Second. Move and second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Unanimous, all right. The next item, a public hearing will be held to consider application Z15-02 filed by Fredine, Hump, wait a minute, Halkin, no, no, that's not right. Hakeem. Ha Hakeem. Yes, all right, Hakeem. excuse me, Hakeem. excuse me, yes. Hakeem. Fred Hakeem. Fred, Fred, Fred. Mm -hmm. Fred. Yes. Well, I, I knew that, I knew when I was reading it here, it didn't sound right. Fred Akeem requesting a rezone from multifamily MF3 to general retail for approximately 2.332 acres of abstract 71D Ferguson survey track 17 section two located on the south side of Toller Road <coughs> west of Gilmer Road. Angela Choi will present, thank you. Thank you. The applicant is requesting a rezone from multifamily three to general retail to allow for retail um, development on approximately 2.332 acres. Um, as you can see, this is a larger tract of land right here that is already zoned MF3. He is just looking at rezoning um, the frontage and this area right here. Uh, staff finds that the proposed zoning change is consistent with the future land use map and the surrounding zoning. Planning and Zoning Commission and staff recommend approval of this request and I would be happy to answer any questions. Okay. The public hearing is now open. Yes, excuse me, go ahead. I want to ask Fred how you pronounce his name, because I've never okay, seen it. Okay, maybe we have <laughs> <laughs> Fred's a whole lot easier, I give All right, the, like I said, the public hearing is now open. Are there any in the audience who would like to speak in favor or of opposition to this rezoning request? Thank you, sir, if you'd come up and, and introduce yourself. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Faridun Hakim, but for past 40 years they call me Fred. <laughs> and uh, this uh, map uh, is not the right map. It's uh, a plan, uh, it's a more single family zoning. We want to take the piece of about 2.3 acres and change it to the uh, retail, which uh, Pine Tree really needs some more retail in that area. 
and it's a good location for that. And the rest of it is going to be a, a single family attached housing. Right. And any question, I will answer it. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Paradigm. All right. Hearing no one else that wishes to speak, the public hearing is now closed. Do we have any questions of staff? No questions of staff. Do we have a motion on this item? I'll move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Now, item C, zoning issue item also. A public hearing will be held to consider application Z 15 03, filed by 1601 Alpine Interest, requesting a rezone from single family SF4 to general retail for all of Block 7 Valley View and Lot 8 Block 8 Valley View, located at 1601 Alpine Road. Ms. Choi will present for the city. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the applicant is requesting a rezone from single family four, um, which is in the blue here, uh, to general retail. Uh, the subject property was previously Valley View Elementary and LISD. Um, the applicant purchased the property in 2013 um, in order to utilize the property for anything other than a public school, a church, or government use. Um, a rezone is required. Alpine Road, is, Alpine Road is a principal arterial road, which is appropriate for these type uses, general retail type uses and office type uses. Um, Planning and Zoning Commission and staff recommends approval of this request. I would be happy to answer any questions. Any questions of Ms. Joy? Okay. Thank you. All right, the public hearing is now open. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor or opposition? Okay, my name's not Fred. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, my name's Kevin Stagner. I've been in Longview for more than 40 years, and uh, I'm an owner of uh, 1601 Alpine Interest, and I'll try to answer any questions that you might have of me. Mr. Mayor. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Mr. Stagner, uh, I really know where this location is on, on Alpine Road here. If, uh, are you re referring to the old school at that location on Alpine? Yes, sir. Road. Now, you, you say retail. Now, what type of retail are you talking about, Mr. Stagner? Right next door to it is already zoned general retail. We're just asking for the consistency that's already uh, there in place. Oh, so the entire store just to the north of it is zoned general retail. So, you so we're touching it. General retail. So what's your idea? What, what are you going to put at that location? Well, right now we're trying to get the highest and best use for the property, and so we know that it's not going to be single family. So right. That, that's why we're asking for the rezone. Oh, so, so we do have, not have someone interested in the property okay. at this time. So you don't have any general idea what's going to go there yet? Okay. Well, get back with us when you get an idea of that, okay? Sir? Get back with us when you get an idea about what's going on. Yes, sir. There. Thank you, Mr. All Mayor. Right. All right, thank you. Mr. Stagner, uh, I think we spoke, you called me uh, on this item, which is uh, very proper. Uh, how long have you all actually owned this property? In August, we'll have owned it two years. Uh, it was vacant three years before that with Longview ISD trying to sell it and no takers. We, we thought we had a buyer who was interested in putting a school in it but uh, that didn't materialize. Well, my, my personal comment would be the worst thing that could happen is this building sit there and deteriorate and uh, you have a uh, financial interest here to improve the property, which will uh, considerably, as we say, increase the value and increase the tax roll because as a school, the city does not gain any benefit from the tax roll. Now, whereas privately owned, they will benefit. So I think, uh, my opinion, it's a uh, good project. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Okay. All right, are there any others in the audience who would like to speak on this? All right, thank you. The, hearing, the public hearing is now closed. Do we have any questions of staff? Yep. Move to approve. Second. All right. We have a motion to second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. All right, let's see what's next. Okay. Now we have an action item. Next on the agenda is our action item, consider a resolution approving a compensation adjustment for the city secretary.
for the city secretary, which must be approved by the mayor and city council. Got my script here a little out of order. Okay. All right, what we're doing, we're considering a resolution approving a compensation adjustment for the city secretary. Council members, do you have any questions? Question, yes. Uh, Mr. Allen, I think I'm going to vote in favor of this particular compensation based on the fact that the city secretary and within the city comes to all our meetings, keep us abreast of, of all other type of actions, and uh, I think uh, Ms. Shelley does a great job for this city with her experience. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. John. All right. Okay. Any? All right. Any all right. Yes, please. I make Thank a you. motion. Second. All right. We have a motion second. All those in favor of this item, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Unanimous for approval. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Before you yes. move to the out of the community interest, could I make a motion to excuse Cassia Williams and the mayor from the meeting tonight? Uh, Second. I guess we might approve that. <laughs> I'm sure we'll approve for Cash. I'm not too sure about the mayor. <laughs> yes, we have a motion and a second for approval of Cash and the mayor for tonight's meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up, Richard. Now we have items of community interest. We'll start with Mr. Sims, please. Uh, have nothing to say tonight. Good gosh. Okay. All right. Mr. Smith? Uh, yes, I, I have something to Thank say, you. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Well, I, I guess everybody in the audience uh, in the public uh, looked at the paper yesterday and, and saw that I won't be representing. Uh, I chose not to uh, run for the district number two for the next session. And uh, I was first elected in 2012, and the slogan for my campaign when I first got started was, let us make a difference today for tomorrow. Uh, I, I think I, I, I made a difference on this particular, uh, on, on the city council for the last 36 months, and I met a lot of great people. Uh, First, I want to thank uh, the people of Longview for giving me an opportunity to serve in this capacity uh, because it was a privilege and an honor for me to serve in this, in this capacity. Second, I want to thank the council, Ms. Manley, Mr. Shihara, uh, Mr. Sims, you know, of course, Jay and Ms. Williams uh, for giving me the opportunity to follow their leadership, their character, their integrity, and their professionalism, overseeing the operation of the city. Third, Mr. Willard, uh, Mr. Finley, Ms. Shelley, those are the people that actually report to this council. Uh, and Judge Larry Merriman, he, they are, they, those are the four individuals that report to this council on activities of the city. I want to thank those individuals for giving me a journey and a road map, kind of like a GPS, to follow, go down, take a right turn, so they help us out continue forward. And fourth, I want to amplify that city staff for some of the greatest people in this city, and uh, they help guide me a lot through the whole process. We got some great people working here. We did a reorganization this year, this year, and we put some great people in place to continue to lead this city. And I was 100% behind voting yes on all of those uh, at reorganization. I have completed my task and my race is finished. I have finished with grace. And uh, I'll be here until May the 1st and I'll continue to move forward. Thank you for your time and your effort. To go along with what Mr. Smith said, he called me earlier in the week and told me about this situation. I wasn't really that happy to receive his comments, but uh, I understand you're moving out of your district. Yes. Okay. And, and uh, otherwise, I would hope that, uh, anyway. <laughs> All right, Miss is here. I don't have anything. Mr. Manley. Uh, it's with sadness that I uh, received Gary's call earlier in the week. I, uh, I met him four years ago when we were serving on a committee together. Uh, I believe it was the Streets Task Force, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And I found Gary to be a conscientious member of the committee. He came to all the meetings. He came prepared. 
I got to know him a little better, and I was one of the folks that encouraged you to run um, for city council. And um, we were better for you being here. I always felt that you came um, and voted your conscience. I felt like you always listened. And even though we weren't always on the same side of issues, I think we're probably on the same side more often than we were not. And we always were gentlemen, and, uh, and I respect that about you also. So I, I wish you the best. Uh, again, I think, uh, like I said, we were better for you being here. And I'd also say one other thing. I think you're an example of the kind of thing that we, that, that all of our citizens should, um, should seek to emulate. Because here's a citizen who was asked to serve, served on a committee, did some good work. And when Daryl uh, was no longer able to serve because he was termed out, you stepped up and said, okay, I'll do it. When nobody else did. So you deserve a lot of credit and uh, you have some big shoes to fill. And I wish you the best. All right. You have any comments? Oh, you, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. I just wanted to uh, take this opportunity to uh, just express my appreciation as the city manager to Mr. Smith. Thank you for all your hard work. And you've taught us a lot of things as well. So it's been a, a two-way street and, we've, and uh, it's been very enjoyable. But I wanted to uh, especially uh, give a shout out and talk about uh, our public safety, our fire and police and uh, all the people that uh, have really, especially in our police department the last few weeks that have really uh, been under a lot of strain and stress. And I just want the public to know that the city of Longview has a fabulous public safety, fire and police, and then our IT people uh, working really hard to get uh, our website back up and running uh, as quickly as we can. And uh, anyway, I appreciate Chief Dingler and all of his people that report to him, uh, and Chief Steelman, uh, all of our people. And uh, uh, Longview should be proud of their public safety people. So thank you for all your work. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Willard, anything else? That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. One thing I want to uh, comment here on just a minute, the city of Longview is asking and encouraging residents to apply to serve on a variety of council approved boards, commissions and committees. This is something that's very near to my heart. Many years back, 10, 15, 16 years back, I put an application to serve on the planning and zoning and I really believe I wouldn't have the opportunity to sit here tonight and, and conduct this meeting if I hadn't made that first initial application. Uh, you know, it, it's really easy to sit out there and read the paper, or go to the internet or whatever, whatever all you young people go to, <laughs> and, uh, and find out what's going on. But it's, it's really better to be part of the process. It, it's just, it just takes a little bit of effort, and, and, and it's wonderful effort, and, and we ask you to do this because it helps everybody around. We need to know how you feel about your community because this is your community and you, you need to be part of the process. I mean, Longview is a wonderful city. It's growing, sales tax revenues are up, but we can't do it just sitting up here on the city council. We have to have the support of the people that are out there now watching TV, um, I wanted to say listen to the radio, but that's a little old. <laughs> they don't do that much anymore. <laughs> anyway. Most people are watching on the internet. Now. Yes, okay. But I, I just want to say please apply and be part of the process because we can all benefit from your help. You can get an application online at longviewtexas.gov. Or if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, come by the city hall office here and pick up an application. But please be part of the process because you'll benefit from it and the city will benefit from it. All right. Anything else? We do else? have Pony Express available as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Any, any other items tonight? All right. The meeting will be adjourned. Excellent job.